Hello and welcome to the first video about our newest game which is called Zvieri and it's about catching and fighting with creatures but this first video will only be about the card design and uh, how we got here what kind of thoughts were in there and how I, I guess, approach the design of these cards so how did we get to this latest card design and I say latest because it's an ongoing process uh, I'm not done yet with iterating and as you can see right now it has a it has rough outlines right uh, but there I, I feel like it needs a bit more intricacy to be truly interesting so the first step in making a card is obviously looking at the game mechanics and what needs to be on the card and here is the first card design informed by the game mechanics we had back then it's a lot. Your brain, as far as I've come to understand it, is a big contrast detection machine. And when you look at this, the first thing you see is the picture, that's great, and then your brain does not know where to look. What is the most important information? So this card design lacks fluency, it's a bit too much, you know, it could turn off a newbie player when you see it and it's like, oh my god, it's so much information, I don't know how I'll manage to le learn this game. Or worse, seeing it and saying, oh, I don't, I don't wanna learn the rules and just moving on to something else is bad. So there's an example, I guess, where the card design informed some game mechanics decision. And as you can see, this is the next version here. We cut back basically on all the stats. We only kept heart. This was shield and attack and initiative. So we got rid of all of them and changed it to a catch rate and treasure amount. And we removed the abilities and turned it into a passive. Then once we were settled on a rough design, I went into Inkscape and created the first digital one. And this one's much more appealing, of course, because it has color and shapes and whatever. It looks, it looks just nicer. However, I would say the top is horribly designed because look at this collection of circles or round shapes here it's very confusing to the eye again you know so you have the biggest one this is the highest contrast point in the card and you'll immediately zoom in on that and then your eye will go here and here and it's not a natural way for the eye to move and it would have been better if i just took the biggest one and made the second biggest one here and then the smallest one here it would guide the eye towards the corner and also this part here with the net it just uh, doesn't work because it's not consistent with the rest of the shapes so there's no repetition and there should be I guess so here's another version then because I wanted to make it more consistent and make all the shapes you know fit with each other and we decided to make this big red circle because the creatures all have health dice uh, or a health die on them and this would serve as an area to keep it right and it looks much more consistent and much easier to see and your eye is guided more reasonably so you go to the big red one yellow and then maybe gray and you see the abilities here we went with the middle one because we thought it gave a frame to the card and we thought this one would take too much space and we thought that if we kept this it would intrude too much on the creature design on the creature art but as you can see it did so anyway and as graphical design is about communicating something i ask you what does this communicate certainly not that the creatures are in the foreground and that they are the most important thing in this whole game instead they've been relegated to the background to be hidden behind the stat uh, elements and as you can see here the abilities take up a lot of space without using it all of course a lot of that is to godot's importing but still and before i go to the last big jump in the design i wanted to mention these two because they reflect a consideration about the physical constraints of playing this game. 
one of the things about this game is that it's free and open source and so you'll be able to create your own cards and make your own art and do what you want and of course print and play it and when you consider this card here for example it's very ink intensive and it doesn't look very good once it's printed out on an average printer so i aimed for another version of the game or at least card template where printing it would be cheaper in ink and also look better so i reduced the color palette for example for the lightning frog i reduced it to just three colors a game boy palette and made it as much white space as possible without making it or at least trying to not make it very boring as design so in this in this design i try to emulate a pokedex so i added also a box for the flavor text however it might be too attention drawing because it's in the middle between the most important and it's not distinguished in any way from the most important things and this card it looks very very weird i'm sure it's because we've noticed that during playtesting uh, players always needed to read the cards to play effectively and reading is not just hard because we're illiterate but also because taking off the die and then rotating it giving it to the other person you know rearranging all your uh, your whole board can take some time and i tried obviating that these actions by adding simply a mirrored text field right where the other can just read it across the table you might think seeing these elements obstruct the character and make it hilarious would give me a profound insight into the fact that the game is about the creatures well it took me some time still before i reached the design you see up here and i won't go over these because they're just minor iterations but i'm very happy with where i ended up with these not just because they put the creature in the foreground but because of some other elements such as this small box here which instead of using some ambiguous background to try to communicate the information it just uses a simple icon which is more understandable to anybody a heart uh, represents life and a net represents catching and it's also the most contrasted element in the upper part and it draws your eye in and then it's just really natural to look down go over the art and reach this information here also changing the treasure to simply being a level also connected more with the inspirations for the game which are pokemon and maybe digimon which makes it more fluent for the players and fluency is just a fancy word for saying easily processed and your brain really likes things that are very easily processed cognitively right so this i think just ties it in with what we're going for with with the genre and makes it more appealing and and more approachable also i think there's a effect of you know if you zoom out basically most of the card is just picture and then there's a little text and i think it gives a feeling that there's a possibility to quickly learn this game which i particularly like and there you have it this is how i came to this design obviously i'm still working on it this isn't the final product but i think i'm moving in the right direction and just as an aside this artwork here isn't finished yet and i'm making a video about it i guess my creative process of making these creatures which i actually particularly enjoy this is one of my favorite parts so yeah and simon will be soon coming out with a video of the development of the game from when we started it to now what changed and why it changed and more and please 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 give me feedback right into the comment section what you like or what you don't like what you think could be improved and so on and yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon bye bye